Started in 2015 by Triple IIT Hyderabad alumnus Akash Sinha and IIT Kharagpur graduate Riju Datta, Cash Free enables more than 1 lakh Indian and global businesses, including businesses such as Zomato, Cred, Nike, Delivery, Aco, Shell, among others. As a complete payments platform, Cash Free products are used by businesses for their different payment needs. such as payment collections vendor payouts wage payouts bulk refunds expense reimbursements loyalty and rewards cash free was incubated by paypal and is backed by sbi silicon valley investor y combinator korean investment firm smilegate investments among other investors the company has rolled out several innovative products in the payment space such as instant refunds for cash on delivery orders 15 minute payment gateway settlement connected banking api platform payouts direct among others cash free says that it has a market share of more than 50% in bulk business payment disbursals and is processing transactions worth 20 billion dollars annually since inception 120 million unique bank accounts have sent or received money via cash free apart from india cash free's products are used in eight other countries including the usa canada and uae Our anchor Mukda Warrior visited Cash Free for a deeper look into their story. Akash, thank you so much for joining us, and really glad to be here at the Cash Free office. Uh, you know, let's go back right to the start in 2015 when you and your co-founder Riju started Cash Free. You know, it was such a crowded space. Everyone was doing payments. Everyone was doing fintech. It was the buzzword. What was the problem that you thought was still unsolved for you to decide to start Cash Free? Thank you, Mukda, for inviting on the show, and very welcome to our office. See, I mean, when we got into the payment space, we started with a very small idea. We wanted to digitize COD payments, right? I mean, because that time getting exact cash or change was a right. bit harder for the customers, especially for the home delivered orders. Yeah. And so that was an entry to the payments industry. But after a while, we figured out right, all the payment companies were just built around one single product, right? It was just a payment gateway which everyone was selling. And even to build a new feature around payments, they were building it around payment gateway. So that made their product more and more bulkier. Hmm. Right? But what we figured out, see, instead of just building a one product, hmm. problems of these merchants can be solved better if you have a multiple modular product. Okay. Right. So when you look at Cashfree, Cashfree platform, when we launched it, we had a four different products on the day one. Right. So you can use these products independently, plus you can also these products in conjunction. Right. And this helped businesses solve the. Solve their payment problems in a much efficient and okay. a faster way. So Akash, that was your moat, right? You wanted to position yourself as a full stack payments player, not just one product. So you had a payout, you had a payment gateway, you had auto collect, etc. Right from day one for uh, your partners to use. So that is what sets you apart. What makes Cash Free uh, the one of the leaders in this space? No, that's correct, right? If you look at any online business, they have different kind of payment flows, different kind of payment problems, right? Let's take example of e-commerce industry, right? One of the problems you face is collecting money from the customer, right? Then your problems of paying to your sellers on time, you have to pay to your delivery agent, and you also have to refund money back to your customer, right? And then you have certain suppliers, you instead of paying via digital modes, which are credit card, UPI, and net banking, they would want to pay you via bank transfer modes. right so these are the tend to you know these are like you know i mean we haven't touched base upon all the problems but these are the you know primary payment problems which any online business face today mm. right so that was our idea with the cash free right let's not go and just solve one problem let's give a single solution to all these merchants and they can get most of the payment problem solved just by signing up on cash free right and that made this business also very attractive and right? because now we can penetrate into different kinds of market segment which was not possible for a payment gateway businesses right and if you look at a journey we became we started becoming profitable in very early of our you know the entire growth period itself so akash accounts is your newest product then in your portfolio let's go a little deeper into that and you know help us understand how it works what are the use cases you're going to create current accounts for neo banks uh, for players in the gig economy especially because gig workers don't have accounts etc could you just highlight what could be the possible use cases of uh, your accounts feature right see accounts is one of the first product as part of a larger story right as i said we want to you know play the role of distributing digital payment instruments in the in the, in the market get more customers part of the digital ecosystem so speaking of the accounts product with this product any business can create a bank account just by calling cash free api and we do all the hard work in the back end right you don't have to worry about you know what process because if you go and directly work with a bank they have their own set process right and if you want to work with 5 to 10 different banks you have to adopt your product to handle all these set processes which is pretty tedious for any digital company 
So you can just tie with Cashree. Cashree will have integration with all the top major banks, and we can help you create accounts wherever you want okay. in, a, in a very efficient and faster way. The accounts is our first product, and with this, we can help any platform, any new bank, any marketplace create a bank account for their customers. Let's take example of you know companies in hyperlocal space or companies in gig economy space, right? Suppose you are getting you know 1,000 contractors who are going to serve your customers. If those guys don't have bank account, how, how can you you know pay their incentives to them, right? You don't want to pay cash to them, and it's very, and it's not easy for you to ask them go to X Y Z bank and open an account, right? Because these guys are just you know coming for you to work, and they just want their life to be you know sorted. Right? So these gig economy companies, they can tie up with cash free and they can create bank accounts for all their workers on demand so that they can pay money to them, pay incentive to them on time. Right? So this will be the starting thing and down the line we can also you know, empower these platforms to give say debit cards to these, these, their customers. You can also help these online companies give wallets to these customers so, they, so that they can store money into their wallet and they can use that money to you know, do their own digital shopping, whatever they want. So cards and wallets, etc., yeah, in the pipeline. Exactly, that will be in the pipeline. We are starting with accounts, so any company can create current account right now. We'll also you know help them create savings account. They can also create a virtual account with us, and down the line they can create wallet, they can create cards, and whatever payment instruments you know they they, they find it helpful. We are going to support that. Understood. Let's talk about the fact that you now have more than 1 lakh merchants, you've processed 20 billion dollars transactions annually. Uh, tell us about the growth right from that, you know, the first billion dollars and the first merchant to now 1 lakh merchants. I think it has, it has been an adventurous journey. I think when we started it was very hard for us to imagine we reaching this stage. But it happened at a gradual basis, right? I mean the moment when we started working with enterprise customers like Nike, Cred, Zomato, Right, delivery, right? So, so by working with these enterprise customers, we understood their requirement, we understood that behavior, and then we came back and built a platform to handle very high scale. So today, if you look, right, we can process transactions at a thousand TPS, right? We can process thousand transactions in a second, right? Compared to the market where we can only process 20 transactions in a second. So that is a very significant leap we created in this market, and that is a comfort we want to give to all these you know, innovative companies in the India. Right, because we have a country with billion do billion population. Right? If you and even want to target 10% of that, you have to manage 10 million customers at any point of time. And you need is a very that the target? And is that also, uh, what is going to be the target now? Of course, you are uh, at 1 lakh. What would you look to close FY22 uh, with? See, I mean, so in next 12 to 15 months, we want to process almost 10 million transactions on a daily basis. That is a target we have set internally. Today, we are somewhere around 2, 2.5 million transactions on a daily basis. But if you ask for eventual goal, I think we want to position as a platform. No matter where the payment happens in India, it should go via cash flow platform. If that is the best case for us. And that is what all of us are striving towards, right? And that's where being a platform you know, player makes bigger sense. So that's your goal. All payments should go through the cash free platform. Most of them. Most of all is exaggeration. But <laughs> that's a yeah. good ambitious goal yeah. to have. You know, let's also come to your backers, really. You know, you right. have some very credible uh, people backing you, institutions backing you. And just recently, you've got India's biggest lender, SBI, invest in your company. Right. Tell us, was this a strategic investment? What kind of partnership can we see between cash free and SBI going forward? Right. See, I'll just give a small background here, right? I mean, we are not a very traditional fintech company, right? I mean, when we start, we are we are in a B2B space, we are a profitable, and we we have brought you know almost six to seven innovative solutions in the market, right? That makes Cashly very attractive for any investor, right? For SBI, we made a lot of sense because you know our goals are pretty aligned, right? SBI as a bank wants to improve digital ecosystem in the country, and we also you know as a company is trying to play our own role, right? The product we have built is helping merchants grow their digital presence. Right? So we have been talking to SBI, actually we started talking to SBI like six months before they actually invested. It's a financial investment for them, but again, we as a company can benefit a lot. So they have a very wide set of branches, they work with all kinds of customers, we can understand their problem. And we can also go in the market and jointly pitch a solution to you know, all the larger enterprises in India. So there is going to be a deep uh, partnership there going forward? There will be, there okay. will be. Okay. So, you know, there's going to be a deep partnership then with SBI and Cash Free, but I really want to know what were the discussions like because SBI is the biggest lender, they rarely even mm. invest in fintech. What are their what are their expectations? What were the discussions like between you and SBI? No, that's correct. I think Cash Free will be, you know, one of their first fintech investments in the last 10 years, as per my knowledge, right? See, I mean, Cash Free is, you, we can't compare ourselves with the other payment companies, right? I mean, we have we have disrupted the entire industry. Right. As I said before cash free, all the payment businesses were just built around single product. And we changed the entire model, right? Our platform hosted four products on the day of inception. 
And that is something which attracted SBI a lot, right? I mean, the business is much stable, right? We can keep on building new products on the platform. We can keep going after new market segment. And we can solve more problems for a business, right? These are very strong points for the cash fee. And that is something SBI got it, right? It's not something every investor in understands these, you know, these are very minute things, but these things also make company very scalable. So SBI basically used your products, loved how it worked for them, and that's why I decided to... They did. Invest. I think they actually went deeper. They went through a process. They went through a process of vetting a merchant. They went through a process of sourcing a merchant. They went through a process of how do you even innovate, right? What are the checks and balance in place? And how do we plan to grow faster? So they revalidated all the plans. They revalidated the way we are working. And, and, and then they decided to move away. It was a very long journey, but also we learned a lot as part of the process, right? I mean, for a company, we keep SBI, RBI on a similar stage, right? I mean, they are also a very large institution. And they have a deep experience about how a company should be run. So it's a good validation about the operations of cash. It's a good validation about how we are running the company. And, and we feel very lucky to get invested by SBI. Absolutely. But is there some pressure now? Like you said, they're one of the biggest, oldest lenders. They have expectations of how a company should be run, like you said. They should. I think they have more expectation about improving the digital ecosystem, right? I mean, playing more and more active role, be it policy making, be it deciding what to be done next, right? How to shape up this economy so that, you know, we can grow this entire, you know, GDP eventually, right? How do we help more SMEs be part of digital ecosystem? How do we bring more unbanked customers on the digital ecosystem? And how do you even help people penetrate you know, on these digital products eventually? Right. Akash, you know, so far we've talked about uh, cash freeze products. Let's talk about another new product that has been really innovative and has caught everyone's attention, and that is e-rupee, which is a prepaid voucher that will, uh, you know, give beneficiaries the benefits without having any bank accounts as well. It's quite innovative. What are your thoughts on it? And how do you look at this whole product innovation? I think for me personally, it's a very you know, innovative breakthrough product. So we are in this business of dispersal for the last three years, right? And I can relate ERP with her initial innovation called Cashgram. Right? So I just give you a small background. Cashgram is a product through which you can send money to anyone without asking for the bank details. As right? so we already are working with companies who are in the dental industry, companies who are in the you know, hotel industry, companies who are in the bike industry, right? So cash ERP is slightly an extension of Cashgram. In Cashgram, the end customer still needs to have a bank account wallet to redeem the money. But in eRupee, you don't need any digital instrument and you don't even need internet. Right? We see it's a great innovation and we'll be happy to partner with eRupee down the line to improve our dispersal stack you know, overall. Absolutely. And I think right now they're focused on social welfare schemes. We have to see also whether how they will expand and whether the private sector also can benefit from eRupee or not. That's correct, right? I mean, I think it's a very universal solution, right? I mean, it's, it makes us or any business very easy to send money to their customer, their vendor, and they don't have to worry about asking for any payment instrument either. Although it should be, see, again, it depends on the usage, right? If you want to program the money to for a specific use case, eRupee is very good. But if you want people to send money to the bank account or wallet, then Cashgram is already a solution in the market for the last three years, right? I mean, people can use it as cash free even today. So everything can coexist basically, Akash. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's one of the payment modes for us, right? That's how absolutely, I see it. Absolutely. Coming back to cash free now, you know, you've seen strong growth of about 100% in revenues over the last couple of years. You've been profitable. Uh, what is FY22 looking like? What is the future roadmap looking like for you in terms of growth? Right. I think cash free, I think, would be one of the youngest company to you know, hit profitability in a very early of the journey, right? We have been growing 100% year over year for the last four financial years. Right. Last year, we also did a revenue of close to 240 CR. This year, we're aiming to you know, bump the number to upwards of 650 or 700 CR. And also, you know, we'll stay profitable this time if everything goes well. Right. So, we, we, so that's why we're also preparing for the future years. We are coming with new sort of solution around cross-border, new solution around subscription. We're also building you know, mandate product. And we see ourselves going for 100% growth for the next two to three years. Okay. Right. And obviously, the ecosystem is growing fast. Right? This pandemic has accelerated digital payments adoption. And we see ourselves, you know, riding on this wave for the next few years for sure. So 100% growth for the next few years. And, you know, you talked about uh, cross-border solutions as well. Let's talk about your global expansion plans because you have strong plans when it comes to uh, deepening your uh, play in a few markets that you already are in. Tell us a little bit more. See, I think this, this thought of cross-border you know, came into our mind three years ago when we, we were in the Y Combinator, right? So we are part of 100 other startups. And we see companies that are being built for global audience from the day one. Right. We don't see that you know, culture or even motivation in India a lot. Right? In India, we are building a lot of good products. Market is competitive. It's a huge market. Right? What we believe, if we are successful here, it's slightly easier for us to be successful at other places. Again, I might be exaggerating. But we don't have to leave other markets you know, behind us. 
right? So the products that we built in India, PR, subscription, auto collect, and things like you know banking as a service, issuing, we see good potential for this product in a lot of emerging markets. Right? So that's where the entire thoughts are in a converging. Right, YC gave us a good stage. We 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 could we got in our eyes open in a very good way. Right, we met with a lot of companies there who are in the global, and we came back with a lot of learnings. Right, so right now for plan is, I mean, we we got in some decent success in India, and let's try similar countries, emerging countries, where we can go and improve the digital payment acceptance and ecosystem. Could you talk a little bit about these countries, and also you're also in not just emerging countries, right? You're also in the US, you're in Canada, etc. What are your plans there? See, as of today, we have customers from eight you know, international countries. We have customers from US, we have customers from Europe, customers from Australia. And these customers are using cash free product to interact with Indian users. Right? So we have companies like Aramax who are using cash free stack to send money to sellers in India. Right? Then we also have companies, you know, e-commerce companies based out of France and who are using cash free ecosystem to accept money from Indian customers. We're already doing that. But now the future plan is to have a local presence, right? Go into these countries, create a you know, onward local merchants, and sell most more cash free solution there. So in terms of plan, we are targeting few emerging countries, right? I mean, you're not. It's very hard to get into saturated market. We are getting into countries where digital adoption is growing, similar to you know, it's growing in India. So global company, that's the ambition then for you. For sure, right? I mean, that's what everyone should do. I mean, in my opinion, but we, we definitely are going to, towards that route. Right, we'll start with say five new countries and plan to be in 20 countries, you know, by 2025. Okay, so five new countries. Interesting ambition there. So Akash, we have talked about your expansion plans, your hiring plans, acquisition plans, etc. What are some of the other objectives? What are some of the other focus areas for you right now at Cash Free? Right, see the way we are growing, the speed that we are growing. Right? It's very important for us to you know take a step back and think about compliance and data security. Right, you must have heard about data breaches in last you know 12 months. And that is one thing we are very serious and particular about. And we also want to you know, give a very good comfort to our businesses and the ad customer. So in, internally, we're investing a lot. We already have a compliance and audit team in place. We're also building a lot of internal tech solutions to, you know, re, in real time, identify whether the transaction is risky or not, whether there could be a component of fraud or not, so that we can you know, take away this pain point from the merchants. Right? Suppose you're trying to sell, a, sell, sell online, right? and 20% and of orders go into fraud orders. Yeah. So you as a merchant lose money. It's as a payment place, this is our responsibility to reduce fraud in the system, right? You know, protect the customer's data, invest in the cyber security, and give comfort to everyone who's participating in this digital journey, right. right? Without investing in this compliance security, I don't think digital journey can grow, you know, at a speed where we as a country want it to grow. Let's come back to banks because those have been your partners for the last several years. Uh, what has the journey been like with them, especially? in terms of their adoption of technology, are they adopting technology fast enough now? Because that has always been the complaint with uh, banks, right? Uh, are they now looking to partner more with fintech players? Is there now more collaboration between banks and the fintech sector? That's correct, right? So you see the entire industry is going through a technical boom, right? You have a lot of tech savvy businesses. And if I have to put it right, I think more than 50% of the businesses which are coming in the market today are online driven companies, right? Their primary sales of, their primary channel of selling is online. And that's where banks receive a lot of requests around technical requirement. Few banks have been able to you know, adopt to that, but still I think majority of them are still trying, trying to you know, be to a level where they can work with all these online companies. So those are the areas where banks and fintech come together and they go and serve the technical needs of their customers and they see as a win-win proposition. Right? Because fintechs are nimble, they can move fast, they can iterate fast, and banks bring the comfort for the business in the first place. Right? They have some knowledge, they have the platform, they, they know the regulation very well, right? So bank plus fintech is the best combination. And that is why we see the industry growing in the future, right? Obviously, there are a lot of areas where fintechs do a great job compared to bank, right? But they, they still need a bank to be partnered with so that together we can give a good comfort, you know, to the business, right? Because since we're dealing with, you know, money, right? We need a lot of trust in, in the entire process. That's why banks are pretty important even today. Absolutely. Banks are important and collaboration is important. That's like correct. You said. Banks have to create bridges, I think, just to add it. I mean, yeah. it's very hard for fintech to work with a bank if they don't find yeah. the right bridges, which few banks have done right. very well. And we have seen them do it uh, more frequently now than before. We, that they it's are happening. Doing. See, there's a reason fintechs are growing, right? There are banks who are helping them. But right. still, I think we still have a lot of scope, right? There are new areas. We have solved payment acceptance. We have solved dispersion. But we still have to solve things around issuance, payment instruments, you know, ability to create new instruments on demand in order to give a good experience. Again, I'm not talking about just you know, new customers from tier three. I'm also talking about people who are coming to banking channels the first time, right? Think about a 20 year old, you know, boy or a girl, right? Who's like very Instagram addicted person. 
see, it's very hard for them to go through the banking experience yeah. which someone you know, went through 10 years ago. <laughs> so we have to keep building the rails in such a way that you know, fintechs can innovate and build products so that it can be you know, receptible by new kind of audience right. coming in the industry. Otherwise, That's I think we'll fail behind, right? I mean, yeah. the behavior is changing. Absolutely. And these guys are first-hand internet users. Absolutely. Good point there, Akash. And pleasure talking to you and all the best with your plans at Cashfree. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Munga. Thanks a lot.